Okay, now continuing with part four, we're going to get started by setting up some material for our front here. But before we do that, we need to fix a couple things on our dial. I decided that I'm going to have uh, two colors on this dial. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this outer ring and the center button. We're going to make that chrome, but on this inside part, we're going to make that a black color. So to do that, what we're going to do is grab the dial, go into polygon mode, and I'm just going to select these inner polys. I'm going to go to function and split. And the reason why I'm splitting this off is because I don't want that inside piece there that I've just selected. I don't that I don't want that to be picked up by our reflection sphere for the chrome. Uh, we're actually going to be making another reflection sphere that I want to be uh, picked up by that. So uh, let's split that off. And now what we want to do is hide that bottom piece. The top piece is the main piece that we just uh, selected so we're gonna go ahead and delete those polys on there gonna hide that select this bottom dial object that was duplicated that's our ring so we're gonna call this inner dial okay that looks pretty good now I want to take the fong tag for both the dial and the inner dial select both of them and we'll change the angle for both to 25 Okay, now let's grab our gloss black material, drag that over here to the inner dial. Let's make a preview render, and you can see it is picking up the chrome uh, reflection sphere, and the way to fix that is to take the compositing tag, click that, go into the exclusion, grab that inner dial, and say drag that to here, and by doing this we're going to exclude anything in this box from being picked up and seen by this reflection. So we'll do another preview render and now it's disappeared. Okay, that looks good. Let's grab the chrome, drag the chrome over to the dial and we'll make another preview render. There we go. It's not looking too bad. We may need to adjust the chrome, but for now that looks pretty good. Okay, let's make a white material for the front. So file, new material color is going to be go to color that's default is white the reflection need to go to the Fresnel effect open that up and we don't want black we actually want a very mid colored gray and we need to go to the mix mode multiply that way we can taint uh, we can change the brightness down to 50 percent okay specular needs to be metal the width needs to be 80, height needs to be 100, and the illumination needs to be set to blend. Drag that over here to our front, and because it's not going to use any set selection tags, we're going to drag it all the way over to the left where our selection tags for the material and selection start. Okay, so we'll do another preview render. Beginning to look good. Now we need to set up our reflection sphere that's going to be used for our painted surfaces because you can see when we preview render this nothing is still being shown here on the reflection. So let's create a sphere. We're going to call this one chrome sphere. I'm going to change the radius to 6000 and the segments to about 40. Okay now what we need to do is create a new material going to disable all the channels except for the luminance channel and we're going to pick a gradient I'm going to go into the gradient first thing I'm going to do is change the type to 2D V and I'm going to grab this white slider I'm going to pull it over to about the middle somewhere I'm going to take this black one and pull it over to about there I'm going to click here that's going to create another black slider and I'm going to pull this all the way over to the right and I want it to be very close to that white slider so I'm going to maximize this window can get a better feel and look at this so I'm going to drag this over to about there now we can take this apply it to our chrome sphere I'm going to need to back out here for a moment and I want to rotate this I'm going to go to the coordinates tab and here in the banking, which is the, which is a rotation B for banking, we're just going to take this over to a negative 100. 
Okay, so when we do another preview render, now you can see we're beginning to get some reflection on the back, which is looking really good. Okay, so I don't want to be able to see this reflection sphere here either, so let's right click, Cinema 4D tags, compositing, let's get rid of all of these here for the shadowing and scene by camera. I'll hide that for the viewport. Now, when we render this, you can see we're getting a bunch of nasty looking stuff going on here on our Chrome. And the reason is because we need to exclude the Chrome from being picked up by the, uh, I'm sorry, I think I, I renamed this one wrong. This actually here needs to be Paint Sphere and not Chrome. This bottom one here is the Chrome Sphere. I actually renamed those wrong. Okay, so we're getting some nasty black spots here on our Chrome, and the, the way to fix that is to take the Paint Sphere, go into the Compositing tag, go to Exclusion, grab the Chrome Hypernerve, and drag that down into here. Also grab anything else that's Chrome, which is going to be the Dial. And now, when we make another preview render, now those spots should be gone. There we go, and we're getting some nice highlights and reflections here on the back as well. Okay, so it's starting to look good, starting to take shape. Now we're going to quickly move on to the screen. So what I'm going to do here for the screen is I'm going to create a new material, and I'm going to go onto my hard drive, and for the luminance channel here, I'm going to activate that. And I'm going to go to load image, and I'm going to load up an image that I took a snapshot of my YouTube uh, homepage. Okay, so you can see there's the resolution. It's a 981 by 712. It's, it's a very odd uh, resolution, uh, but I just grabbed a screen capture of that. And to look at it a little better, we can actually go over here and right click on the preview and go to plane. We can get a better shot of that. So I'm going to take this new material over to our front. Here is our screen selection tag. Need to drag this just to the right of that grab our selection tag, bring it down to selection. You can see things are looking a little crummy here. So let's take the projection to flat and we need to disable tile because you can see it's actually tiling over and over again. So let's get rid of that. Alright, now we need to click on the front and you can see it's not fitting into the screen area here so we're going to need to do some weighting. So let's go into line mode Let's select these lines, then hold down the period key on the keyboard, and while you've got that whole, uh, held down, just click and drag to the right, and that will weight those lines. You can see how it's to the left will take away weight, to the right will add it. Okay, so now you can see it's showing up a little better, so let's quickly, uh, while I've got a minute or so left, let's go ahead and choose the texture axis tool here and let's position this into place grab the scale tool let's scale that up that looks really good now when we make another preview render you can see it's starting to take shape and look a little better we actually probably need to make that a little bit bigger so let's go and scale that up just a little bit more that looks pretty good and what we may need to do is take this here for the luminance and we may need to change this to multiply take the brightness up to about 175 just to get a little more brightness out of it since the screen is supposed to be acting as a uh, illuminate object all right now we also need to add some reflection so I'm gonna go to the Fresnel effect and I'm going to change this to a light gray color going to hit additive. It's going to uh, help add the reflections uh, a little better here to our uh, luminance channel. Okay, so when we make another preview render, that's actually a little blown out, so let's go over here and take the luminance back to 100. Alright, so there we go. It's starting to come together and it looks like I'm running out of time, so uh, this concludes part 4 and uh, stay tuned for part five and hopefully we can finish it up in part five. So thank you for watching.